Welcome back to Live at 7. We are taking you inside the story tonight. Jamaica is perceived, wrongly or rightly, to be one of the most homophobic nations on earth. So much so that for years the island has had to take a battering from the gay rights lobby groups, especially those outside of the borders. Now, what does the, so what does the 2012 National Homophobia Survey has to say as it checks trends and attitudes and perceptions towards members of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community? Let's take a look inside the story. Despite a very high percentage of awareness and belief that there is a fair to high prevalence of homosexuality in Jamaica, only 21% agree that the century-old Bogri law should be amended to make some homosexual acts legal. 93% of respondents believed homosexuality is between somewhat and very prevalent in Jamaica. About half of that amount think the behavior is present in all social classes. The rest continue to be of the view that homosexuality is an upper-class phenomenon. About half of respondents became aware of homosexuality by age 14, with 38% learning of it from friends and family. Media accounts for 32%. School, church, and on the streets represent 30%. Of note, awareness through the church doubled in 2012 over 2011. The study conducted by the Department of Sociology, Psychology, and Social Work at the UWI Mona up to July 2012 is a follow-up to the National Survey of Perceptions and Attitudes Towards Sexual Relationships conducted in Jamaica in 2011. Researchers polled the views of 1,000 respondents aged from 18 to 84 from various occupations and socio-economic backgrounds. Most attend church at least two to three times per year. That religious grouping is showing more tolerance toward homosexuals. However, Positive attitudes toward homosexuals are likely to be found in less religious persons. As with the previous study, females and more higher educated persons who do not listen mostly to dance hall and reggae music are more tolerant of homosexuals. In the workplace, 54% said they would not hire an openly gay or transgender person. However, 65% said they would not fire an employee simply because of sexual orientation. About 80% of respondents understood the definition of homosexuality to be about the sexual act and not its true meaning, sexual desire directed toward the same sex. Meanwhile, more Jamaicans feel that professional help can change a homosexual's orientation. 53% in 2012, up from 47 the previous year. So, should the Bogri Act of 1864 be amended to protect the rights of gays and lesbians? 78% say no. The rest, 22%, would support an amendment allowing for consexual sex between homosexual adults in private. When the question about an amendment to the 2011 Charter of Rights to protect the rights of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community was posed to the respondents, 65% said they would support it. The findings from this 2012 study show that Jamaicans continue to hold strong negative attitudes towards homosexuality and the law, giving protection to same-sex relationships. Positions have indeed hardened somewhat, and now we're to discuss the issues. We're joined by, by Dr. Keon West, social psychologist. Tanya Stevens is a dance hall and reggae artist, and we have with us as well Javed Jagai, Education Outreach Officer for JFLAG. Lady, gentlemen, good evening, welcome. Um, Dr. West, let me begin with you, your early reading of the 2012 findings. Yes, so if I could, I'd like to talk about both the 2011 and the 2012 findings. I think it's important research that has to be done because we know anecdotally that Jamaicans don't like gay people, gay men in particular, but it's very important to quantify this research until they show what it is Jamaicans actually think how they feel about it, and what predicts it. If I could make one really interesting statement in reading it, what I'm surprised at is the incredible lack of relationship between things like religion and attitudes towards gay men. And this is a really important finding. So when I did some research on attitudes towards, for example, contact, what they call interacting with gay men, and attitudes towards them, 
We found about 53% of the variance could be explained through contact variables in one way or another. In 2012... Meaning what? Break it down for us. Break it down. So what does that mean? If I could explain about 53%, so let's say that I'm trying to explain someone's height by their weight, you know, that generally, or someone's weight by their height. Yes. The taller someone is, the more that they'll weigh. And you can expect this to be a really good relationship. You mm -hmm. can expect a lot of the variance in weight to be explained by height. The taller someone is, the more likely it is that they'll weigh quite a lot. Mm -hmm. You expect less of the variance in height to be explained by, let's say, specifically what it is that they're eating. Yeah. So if they eat a certain kind of food, but they might exercise, they might not exercise, you get less of the variance. People could eat the same thing, but not weigh the same amounts. So you get less of the variance explained. Understood. Understood. Extrapolate now for the Great. purposes so, of the study. So what I found in one of my own papers is that when people interact with gay men, and this is particularly in Jamaica, they change their attitudes quite a lot. And that explains about 50 to 60% of the variance. So that's mm -hmm. quite a big deal. In 2012, Professor Voxhill found about 7% to be explained by religion. And in 2011, he didn't find a relationship at all. I thought that was very interesting because the rhetoric circles a lot around religion, but we don't need to alienate a lot of people who hold religious beliefs because they're changing their minds one way or another. Javik Jagai, from where you sit at um, JFLAG, how do you read the results? Well, I think um, we are not surprised by the findings, certainly. We understand that Jamaica is a very homophobic society with pervasive negative attitudes towards um, gays and lesbians and bisexuals and transgender people. Um, what I think is encouraging is the fact that there is a recognizable, distinct minority of people who do um, recognize the humanity of um, gays and lesbians and who are willing to stand by that um, in a survey like this. So one in five people surveyed said they are tolerant of gays and lesbians and are willing to um, support an amendment to the Bogri law and the Charter of Rights. Yeah. So that's very encouraging. But, but, but Tanya Stevens, from where you sit as a, a dancehall artist, um, the dancehall artists tend to be the vanguards of um, this anti-homosexual rhetoric. Um, this must be good news for the, the industry. Um, well, f to begin with, it's a little bit unfair that all of dancehall got labeled um, homophobic because that's not true. But it is good to see that, you know, in some ways we're changing for the better. Um, you know, I don't represent Dancehall, by the way, so I'm here just representing Tanya Stevens' views. Okay, all right. But, 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 but the industry um, on a whole would be, would be pleased with the result, as I mentioned earlier. But you are saying somehow that that nucleus of individuals who, though in the minority, are in, in support of our tolerance, um, our tolerant way Human rights. the behavior on the point of human rights? Yes. Well, I mean, there are exceptions to every rule. Um, even if dancehall has been labeled, there are people who are not homophobic and are not advocating violence against any group. And, and so I am annoyed that we got labeled in the first place. But as I said, according to the research that I just barely glanced at, mm -hmm. I, I see that there are some things to feel hopeful about, and I'm happy. All right. We're going to pick up on this very important discussion after this. Observer really matters. It keeps me up to date with new stories, the stock market, and the economy. And I can also keep my eye on my competitors. Observer West is my thing. Getting it delivered to my computer, it's interactive. North Coast to the South Coast. My son of finance gives me a roundup of corporate, local, regional, and international news that matters. The credible journalism, not to mention the agenda, there's no debate about it. Entertainment. Auto. The Mobile Clock. Continue experiencing the Jamaica Observer in print and our all access digital package. Subscribe today. I really like Pepper Pot. It's more compact and easier to read. I think it was all woman. It speaks to me and that matters. Teenage Observer, it's perfect. What would I do without my study center? It's a trend center. At the end of the week, I look forward to the Sunday Observer in Wagwan. And that's what matters. Every day matters. Subscribe today by going to jamaicaobserver.com or calling our nearest office. September 6th, season 2 of Joint Tables. I and I are going to make sure to say Rebecca in an eye corner. This Rebecca person. I don't think there's one Christian bone in that woman. This relationship that is growing between Ras Aymanai 
and Rebecca is a no no. Rebecca belongs to me. Compromise what? The excitement continues. See, we are not good again. Brought to you by the student. Pragmatic production. Help your child reach their potential at Distinction College, now open at 2A Grants Crescent off Hagley Park Road and 2 Hanover Street, Spanish Town. Distinction College is now registering students for CXC and Cape January SIT and May-June 2013 exams. Only 4500 per subject. Pay for three subjects and get one free, or five subjects and get two free. Register now and get an extra term free. Call 356-4167 or 354-8560 today. You and me side by side, all a part of this family. Together we can go far, just so long as we start. Run with me, you will see only bright skies all day. Rainbow colors shining through, set free the happiness in The Credit Unions of Jamaica, your path to financial freedom. high on homophobia the latest survey confirms that that's the national survey of attitudes and perceptions of Jamaicans towards same-sex relationships conducted by the Ian Box Hill team up there at the University of the West Indies Mona it's out and we're discussing it this evening on live at 7 generally unchanged over 2012 so over to you then Javed Jagai if um, things have not moved much, um, what is that saying then about the advocacy of groups like JFLAG and even external groups that would um, advocate and also assist the cause for JFLAG here? I'm glad you raised that question because now that we have a survey, this is, a, this is the second year the survey is being done, we now have an ability to quantify um, the pervasiveness of anti-homosexual anti attitudes and we're able to then say over time we can track and monitor um, trends um, but we can also measure the, if, the efficacy of our advocacy, which is something we haven't been able to do in this way before. Yes. And one of the great things I think about this survey, too, is that it moves us away from talking about violence uh, alone, um, because one of the biggest critiques of um, GFLAG's work, for example, is that we are um, emphasizing violence, harassment, evictions, and it's thought that we are exaggerating um, the pervasiveness of homophobic attitudes. But now we're saying, OK, let's, let's move away from that. Let's think about the meta-narrative, um, the cultural um, context that creates um, the opportunities for violence to be deployed against LGBT people. And we see where it's, it's very clear in the, in the evidence, in the research, that people do have um, negative attitudes. Yes, and, and those negative attitudes go all the way up to the top of society, even though there's more sympathy, or empathy if you want to call it that, from persons in the upper echelons of society. But here's an interesting aspect of the study that I want to share with our viewers. S speaking now with um, some politicians who were... Um, part of this survey. Politicians were questioned regarding their views about the Bogre law. Although the sample was very small, it is interesting to note that the majority of them, 13 politicians, supported retaining the law. Only six of the 15 said they would support an amendment allowing for consensual sex between adults in private. And this is where it goes all the way up to the top. These are the lawmakers, very likely the persons who will deliberate on legislation. So. How much hope do you hold out when you get this extrapolation from the study? I have a lot of hope, and I'll tell you why. When you read through the study, you recognize that there is a lot of ignorance about what it means to be gay or lesbian. You have people who believe that it's a matter of sexual relations, so they don't recognize that if you're celibate, you're still gay. If you're, if you're celibate, homo heterosexual, you're heterosexual. If you're celibate, homosexual, you're heterosexual. That's not the way it works. So there's that misunderstanding. There's also the misunderstanding um, that homosexual orientation can be changed, and over 50% of respondents said, yes, with professional help, you can change, when in fact that notion flies in the face of research. Then the third Third um, big thing I noticed is that people believe that it's more prevalent amongst the upper classes. So there's a distinct misunderstanding of the universality of homosexual identity. So that misunderstanding then, Dr. West, yeah. um, is it misunderstanding on the part of, let us say, our learned politicians, or are they simply politicking? I think they could be politicking to some extent. I'd also like to comment a little bit on what Javed said before, and I think actually the nature of the debate has changed and this is something that has come out of the advocacy that they've done so even though you have people saying that they still don't like gay people or gay men in particular there's powerful counter advocacy that seems to be making people more aware of this and seem to be pushing people to be more negative 
but the powerful advocacy that's going on gets more people like myself heterosexual male people in Jamaica to say that we support this we think the anti buggery law is a hideous law it should be removed and get powerful politicians like the Prime Minister to say, actually, I'd support these people yeah. in my country. But well, then the study is also saying that it would have um, hurt the Prime Minister somewhat when she came out and made that um, statement in 2011. But it's significant, though, that we were at a place culturally, nationally, where a po leading political figure, weeks before a very crucial election, could step to the plate and say, no, I'm going to affirm the human rights of lesbian, gays, bisexual, transgender people. Not yeah. only that, I will. I will separate myself from the sentiments of the former prime minister and say un unequivocally that I would not be choosing um, people based on their sexual orientation. I'd be considering competency, qualification, and that's all that should matter. That so, was so huge. So Tanya Stevens from the entertainment fraternity, would you affirm such? Would I affirm? The rights of... The right, um, of course. I, I believe everybody has the same basic human rights. I don't believe someone's preference, whether it be... Um, in tandem with mine, or opposing mine, should make a difference to what rights we are allowed or what rights we are due. I don't think. But do you bring that out in your music, though? Do you advocate for it? In of your course, music? I do. <laughs> I use you every forum I have to advocate human rights, and and it's not. As far as I'm concerned, people have have kind of debased the conversation and made it up be about sexuality, and it's not. As far as I'm concerned, it's about human rights. I think we have all the same choices. We have all the same rights and privileges, whether it's something that you were born as or it's something that you chose to become. You know, it really doesn't matter as far as I'm concerned. We have the right to the same choice, even if we don't arrive at the same, making the same choices. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what it is for me. And I use every, every chance I get to talk Listen about Listen to that. this aspect of the uh, study. It says, similar to the previous study, that's 2011, females, higher educated persons, and those who do not listen mostly to reggae and dancehall music are likely to have less negative attitudes towards homosexuals. How do you see it? Well, I haven't really stopped to think about that. <laughs> I mean, that's, um, I can understand females would be more empathetic because... We, we tend to be more maternal. We, we tend to be more understanding of other people's feelings, mm -hmm. generally speaking. And that's been my experience. And, and I think we're a little bit less nosy when it comes to the personal activities of others, except those that we're in direct conflict with. Females? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I know, I know, I know. But, but then um, some other d determinants um, coming out of the study, to include um, one on education. Uh, the results also show that a statistically significant relationship between education level and attitudes to same-sex relationships. It would appear that more educated persons possess positive attitudes towards same-sex relationships. Why? That is a normal finding. You find that everywhere. So in every country that you do this study, the more educated people are, the nicer they are towards gay people. But similarly, the nicer they are towards black people, the nicer they are towards people from different countries or immigrants. It seems that education just has the effect of making people be a bit more decent towards and Tolerant where minorities are concerned. Yeah. And the church now, to um, talk about the frequency of church attendance. Let me put this to you, Javed Jagai. A statistically significant relationship was also found between the frequency of participation in religious activities and attitudes towards same-sex relationships. Those who attend these activities are less likely... Oh, sorry. Let me say that again. Those who attend these activities less are more likely to have positive feelings such as acceptance and appreciation, but equally they are also more likely to feel repulsion towards persons in same-sex relationships. A bit of a dichotomy there. Right. I mean, that's not surprising. I think we know for a fact that many people use a centuries-old book um, to dictate um, sexual morality in the 21st century. You're talking about the Bible. <laughs> yes. And it's absolutely ridiculous. There are other books as well. Yes, yeah. but in Jamaica, that's the one where that's people, people really like. clutch to. And it's unfortunate because it's, it's, you hear someone in front of you saying, look, this is who I am, this is what I feel, please respect me. And you're saying, oh, but my God in the sky says that I should reject you, even though my humanity and my capacity for empathy is saying I should embrace who you are. And it's unfortunate that we, we, we must um, hold on to this, th this book and allow it to cloud our judgment when it comes to how to respond to individuals who are our friends, who are, who are our family members, our co-workers. And I, I find it's very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. 
Where is the leadership going to come from, Dr. West? Where is the leadership on, uh, on the issues that um, Javed Jagai, Tanya Stevens um, are advocating for, that this respect for human rights, taking it from the, the human rights perspective and not so much about the sexual choice perspective? Where is the leadership going to come from in this country? I think some of that leadership is already there in that there are people who are really working hard to make this better. But I think an important aspect of it is that more people who are not gay in Jamaica are going to have to get out and say, we support these people. We think that they should be treated better and we think their rights are very important. And I think it's important to do that on both fronts because it's, un it's understandable that they will fight for themselves. But when we make it normal that we are also fighting for them, we change the dynamic of the society. These people you do recognize do not though, that more people us, coming right? out, heterosexual persons coming out, just to say respect the rights of gay persons, put yeah. them at a kind of a social risk. Yes. So too would it put you, Tanya Stevens, as a, at a professional risk, I would say. You'd probably get less shows. Actually, no. It's it hasn't affected me at all. I've been I've been speaking my mind where the topic is concerned for years. I was warned that, uh, especially when I did one particular song, "Do You Still Care," I was warned that I'd have to pack up and move from Jamaica. And and I think it's unfair that the very the very social group who them called thugs that everybody was saying would make me have to run from Jamaica, where the majority of the people who came to me and say, you know, honestly, I never thought of it like that until I heard you say that. All right. So, so you, we have been misjudging you encourage more than dialogue one and discussion. Yes. Part of what we're having here this evening. Thank you so much for coming in and we'll continue to look at the survey as is necessary. Time now.